Hello everyone, I'm Alejandro Mosteo and together with my project uh, colleague Fabian Chateau uh, we are going to bring you the latest news about the Alayer project. So for any newcomers here, what is Alayer? Alayer is a package manager for the AIDA language and also for the Spark subset based on the packaging of sources and so as any other package manager built around a language community is an easy way to find dependencies, to find libraries for reuse in your own projects, but also a, an easy way to share your own projects for the benefit of the community. And since our last visit to FOSDEM, there has been many developments. Uh, on the 14th of 2021, we, have, we had our first stable release, but also there has been many big features that we are going to discuss in this presentation that we hope will will make or will be already making your programming life easier. So the publishing assistant is a, is the tool within a layer that helps you with making your projects available for others and it relies on a standard workflow of, on GitHub, in which you fork our stand, our official community index repository, you add to it uh, the the new manifests that describe your own projects, and finally you submit a pull request that will be automatically checked by the GitHub Actions, but also will pass a manual review in case uh, there is something unusual about your project. And this pro this process that you can do entirely by hand if you should cho you should chose is make a bit easier with the help of our publishing assistant which will perform a series of validations and will generate the file that, that you have to submit so to see it in a bit more of detail here are the steps that the publishing assistant will will perform you lan launch it in the root of your project and it will first check that the changes are properly committed and in sync with the repository the, with your remote repository then it will verify that you have the proper credentials and proper repositories in your account uh, at github on github then it will perform a check on the files that you intend to submit so it will retrieve the remote sources optionally it will build the release to verify that it can be built of course and finally, it will present all the information, all the metadata for you to, to review. Assuming you accept this information, the last step of the publishing assistant is to generate uh, the file that has to go into the pull request. And also it offers a, a link, which is a standard feature of GitHub, where if you upload the file there, you will automatically create the pull request. Otherwise, you can simply place the manifest in your local clone of your fork of the index and just proceed with a, a regular uh, pull request to any project in GitHub. There is also a, a number of advanced options in case you don't want to, you are not following the simplest Git uh, workflow. For example, you might prefer to submit tar files, and in this case, a layer will create the tar file for you from the sources, be it a regular repository or or a regular folder. You can also pass a manifest template in a non-standard location for people that are maintaining repositories that are not actually allier projects and finally you can check what which are the trusted sites where you can host your git repository for the sources because uh, tar files can be hosted anywhere and a liar will not complain but as an extra precaution for git repositories we have a list of trusted sites with the usual suspects like github, uh, sourceforge, uh, gitlab and so on. Another part of a layer that has seen big improvements is the pinning system. So what are pins? Pins is the the way that uh, a layer offers you so you can use code that is not in an layer index so work in progress or un unofficial versions and things like that 
for example, you are developing two or three projects in tandem that they are changing frequently and together, so you don't want to submit stable versions. And there are several ways you can use this kind of projects. Allier offers uh, five kinds of pins that you are seeing here. The first one is a bit special in that uh, it's simply an, a version of a write, so um, you don't want to edit the standard dependency, but you, for some reason, want to use a particular version, you can specify it like that. Then you can use a local folder, which simply you specify the path to this folder, and this folder will provide the dependency. And then finally, we have the remote uh, variants in which you can specify uh, simply a Git repository. And in this case, the head, the main track, <coughs> sorry, the main uh, branch will be used and it will be updated when you perform an layer update. Otherwise, you can specify a particular branch and this is the branch that will be tracked and the latest code will be fetched from it when you do an update and finally you can simply specify a precise commit when you don't want to see the code change uh, when you perform updates when you just want a particular version the pinning system has uh, some properties for example it's important to know that when you specify a pin this this pin will satisfy the actual dependency no matter what, even if the if the versions don't match. So the moment you take the control from the dependency resolution with a pin, it will always succeed. Then you can also use projects that are not a layer crates, as long as they have a project file to build them with the same name as the dependency you are filling with them. And finally, when you are pinning a layer project, their own manifests will be used to bring more dependencies and to use their own pins. So everything should work recursively as expected as you add uh, pins to your projects if they are a layer project in turn. The pin system is not only useful for work in progress, but also is useful, for example, to segregate uh, examples and test suits from the from a li library that you want to submit for use, and this is the um, the framework, well, the workflow that we suggest to use, in which you have your library that you want to submit to the community index, and then you have subfolders that contain in turn other crates which are crates for tests and for demonstrations and these crates as you can see there can specify as a pin the dependency on the on the base library which is the core of the project but then this these sub crates by being separate can bring in their own dependencies they can build extra executables that are not of interest for a client just interested in the library so they are distributed with your source code and they can be checked by an interested client, but they do not uh, bring in unneeded dependencies or increase the time of compilation and so on. Thank you, Alejandro. I will continue on the new uh, features in, uh, in Alayer. Um, the next one we want to talk about is uh, create configuration. Um, the idea is to declare variables in the create manifest, as you can see here on the slide. Uh, these variables can be strings, booleans, uh, enums, integers, or uh, reals. Uh, for integers and reals, you can define uh, a range, so a first and last uh, value, like you would do in Ada. Uh, it's also uh, possible, but optional, to define a default value for each uh, variable. Uh, from this declaration, uh, Alaya will generate uh, an abstract GPR uh, project file, uh, an ADA specification, and uh, also a C header file that is not shown uh, here. Um, uh, so, as you can see, we see the, the different uh, variables uh, being translated into a GPR or uh, ADA. Um, in the GPR file, uh, this can be used, for instance, to select different set of sources depending on the value of an enum. 
Uh, in the ADA code, you can use the booleans to disable, uh, to activate or deactivate uh, a feature or piece of code, uh, like uh, printing debug logs. Uh, you can use integers to uh, set the, the size of a buffer, for instance. Um, and since these are all uh, name numbers, uh, you can declare your own uh, range types uh, from them. Um, so on the other hand, uh, the crates that uh, depend on uh, a crate with, uh, with configuration, um, you can set the values of the variables of your dependency or dependencies. Um, as we can see here, uh, we, we are in, an, in another crate that depends on my crate uh, and we set the different values uh, for, so we see a string, a boolean, etc. Um, if one of the variables uh, in the dependency tree has no uh, value, so either the default one or a value set by a dependency, uh, the configuration is invalid and a layer will return an error. If two depending crates uh, set the same variable to a different value, uh, same thing, it's an error. Um, and so in general, it's, uh, it's best to only set the values of your dependencies if you absolutely need it. Uh, and so from these settings, we can see uh, the effect. Uh, so for the, for the my crate uh, project, uh, LIO will uh, generate. Uh, of course, different sources based on the, on the value that are set uh, here. Um, next, we're going to talk about uh, toolchains. Uh, we now have our own toolchain release uh, distribution uh, for Alaya. Uh, this release is based on the official GNATFSF releases uh, and is, it is built using uh, public scripts running on uh, standard GitHub Actions workflow. So uh, anyone really can uh, just fork the repository and duplicate the builds. Uh, that's really easy to do. Uh, and uh, actually, you have the, the link at, uh, at the bottom here. Uh, the reason why we added the uh, GNAT distributions in Alayer is that, uh, unfortunately, GNAT is not uh, uh, available everywhere. Uh, it's not it's not available on all Linux distributions, or sometimes uh, JPR build is missing. Um, the Cross compilers are, are rarely available, and so hopefully in the future, uh, GNAT will be uh, broadly available, and we won't have to do the the, the release in uh, in Alaya. But for the moment, that's that's what we that's what we have. Um, so how, how to use the the tool chain? Where for really most people in most cases, uh, the only thing you have to do is when you start uh, Alaya, there will be a tool chain assistant. Uh, that will ask you to select what uh, the default uh, compiler and default GPR build you want to use. Uh, for most people, just use the default value. It's going to take the latest, uh, uh, the latest uh, GNAT and the latest GPR build, and that will be uh, what, what's going to be the default from now on, and it's going to be good for, for most people. Um, but you have the option to uh, don't use the uh, GNAT distribution provided by Alayer and use your uh, system GNAT if that's what you want to want to do. Um, so that's it for the new features. Uh, let's talk about uh, the future a little bit. Um, so first we have uh, uh, a few things that are already in the development branch of Alayer that you can uh, try uh, right now if you if you compile the, the latest uh, sources. Um, so first we have aliases. Um, this is if you're familiar with Git uh, aliases, this is pretty much similar in the, in the user configuration. You can define a, a command to be a replacement for a, a command and a set of options. Uh, so uh, here we have uh, a layer graph, for instance, that's going to be replaced by uh, a layer show uh, dash dash graph. Uh, we have a new, uh, a new way to pass uh, switches to GPR build. So with the alayer build command, you can now add a dash dash and uh, everything else on the command line will be passed directly to GPR build. Uh, and same thing for GPR clear with alayer clear. Uh, so that's that's a way uh, that's easier for uh, for for some usage where you want to customize or you want to try a, a switch for 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 um, GPR build. 
Uh, we also have a new command called exec, which uh, you can use to, to run uh, scripts or executables in the Alayer environment. Uh, so before that, you had to maybe use printemv to uh, set the uh, to change the environment of your shell and then run the executable uh, with this command is just uh, easier um, and uh, if you combine this command with aliases you can make uh, things uh, even more uh, clear and, and easy and the last one we want to mention uh, is build profiles uh, build profiles is a way for a layer to generate a list of uh, build switches uh, that are going to be uh, then um, uh, produced in the uh, create configuration GPR build, GPR file, sorry, that we saw earlier. The list of switches depends on, uh, on, on various things like the build uh, mode. Uh, you can be in release mode, in uh, validation mode, or in debug mode. Uh, and each crate can uh, control and tweak the different uh, switches for each mode. Uh, for instance, if your crate uh, is uh, is written in Spark and uh, and, and uh, proved to be free of runtime error, you can decide that in release mode you disable all the runtime checks. For instance, uh, this is feature is this feature is uh, is is very new and we would like to have uh, some feedback on it. So uh, please uh, please have a look and uh, let us know. Uh, we have other stuff uh, planned and uh, or work in progress uh, right now. Uh, this is obviously not everything, but uh, we are trying to get um, a good integration with Gnat coverage uh, for our layer projects uh, so that we can produce uh, code coverage analysis results and also integrate that with um, cleanly with GitHub and online services like uh, codecov.io. Same thing for uh, Spark and uh, Gnat Proof. Uh, we also have uh, an idea about uh, uh, template crates, uh, which would be uh, uh, something that anyone can contribute to the index, uh, a, a template uh, of a crate um, that uh, users would uh, uh, use to create a new project. And for instance, uh, we're thinking about, uh, I don't know, I want to make a, a web application using a given framework. Well. The, the people developing this framework can provide a template crate uh, that will get everything uh, up and running for a quick demo and that people can start uh, building their application on. Or something for uh, uh, an application for a given microcontroller, for instance. Um, so that's it for the, for the, the uh, little snapshot of the future. <coughs> Now let's talk about uh, the current state of the ecosystem and let's call it the Alayer uh, universe. Uh, so uh, I took a snapshot early January, but actually we are now uh, over 200 uh, crates in the ecosystem uh, as we speak. Uh, we have 21 of those crates that are for embedded and uh, eight of them, eight, sorry, eight of the 200 are uh, written in Spark. There are uh, 199 uh, dependency uh, link between uh, the different crates. Uh, the crates with the most dependencies uh, are listed here. Uh, the, so the, the most dependencies so far is, uh, is, uh, is uh, four. Uh, and the crates most uh, depended on are uh, Matresh Kalig, Gnatkol, and uh, Utilada. And uh, you, will see, you will see what it looks like in, uh, in a second. Uh, we also have more than uh, 8,500 downloads of uh, Alaya, which is uh, also uh, pretty impressive. Okay, so now let's have, uh, just quickly, I'm going to show you the uh, 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 closer look at the different uh, parts of the universe. Uh, so we have the Matreshka uh, Nebula, which is uh, our biggest uh, uh, group in the, uh, in the ecosystem so far. Uh, the Gnatkol uh, constellation, of course. Uh, the uh, very impressive uh, Cares uh, cluster, and last but not least, the embedded galaxy. Um, so, thank you for your attention. That's it for the, the presentation. Uh, um, we also want to thank everyone uh, contributing to the LIR ecosystem. We are looking forward to uh, more uh, hacking uh, all together. Um, if you want to start uh, using Alayer, the point of entry is the alayer.ada.dev website. 
Uh, if you have any question, if you want to chat with us or other users of Alayev, we have a, a, a Gitter channel. And uh, the last link is the uh, main uh, repository for the project. So that's where you can open uh, issues if you find bugs or if you have uh, feedback for us. Uh, and uh, also uh, uh, maybe contribute uh, to the project. Uh, so thank you again, and uh, we hope to see you online very soon. You. I think that uh, the Jitsi software is optimizing video streams. So the Q&A should be now live and uh, we can start with the questions and answers. So Onox um, has the most upvoted question and he asks, if a repo has multiple crates, tar files must be uploaded to GitHub. Will Alir get better monorepo support so that crates can refer to a folder crate inside a repo instead of having to point to a tar file on GitHub? Okay, so yes, actually those past weeks I've been thinking about this precisely and I have the change already in my mind. The branch exists in the repository, so some 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 work in this direction is 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 next. So hopefully you will you will be able to use a regular uh, Git repository for a subfolder for for a crate and maybe even you will get help to publish several crates at the same time instead of going one by one creating all of them okay thank you the second question is also from Anox, who asks will there uh, be support for cpu extensions neon avx etc in case expressions so I'm guessing this is related to the crate configuration uh, feature. So, I mean, that's something we can consider having uh, automatically generated in the in the crate configuration files, uh, stuff like the um, host uh, CPU or properties about the, the, the architecture. Uh, so I think I think it's, it should be doable to some extent. Um, now the question is, can we, what can we detect and, and or not automatically? Um, but that's for, for this specific case, you can already define your own, um, uh, create configuration variable to say that you enable uh, this or that, uh, in, uh, instruction set, I would say. Alex, any comment? Um, I'm not sure it's, uh, or, uh very much related, but we also discussed with Fabian at some point being able to use the configuration variables in the case expressions. So that maybe could help also. We may do some experiments in that direction. Okay, thank you. The next question is from Frederick Praka. Are configuration variables already used in Ada Drivers library? So uh, Ada drivers library is not. Uh, I mean, I, I've met some packets, some crates, layer crates from the uh, Ada drivers library project. Uh, at this point, they do not use the the configuration variables. Uh, if you want to see an example of configuration variables, there's the um, atomic uh, crate that's using it, and I think the uh, RP twenty forty HAL. Uh, also using the crate configuration. As far as I know, that probably the, the two crates using uh, configuration at, at this point. Alex, any comment? Not nothing on my part. Okay. Then the next question also comes from Onox. He asks, is is the name of the of the use build profile also exposed as an environment variable? It's, so it's not exposed as an environment variable, but you do have the, the value in the generated uh, ADA, ADA and, uh, and JPR build file. So if in your project file, you can have a case expression uh, that depends on the value of the, the build profile. Um, if you 
maybe you, you should open an issue on the repository to to tell us what you what you have in mind with the uh, environment variable for for the build profile, and, and maybe we can discuss a bit further uh, this uh, this question. Okay. Uh, a question from me. Um, are there more architectures uh, expected to be supported in LR? I'm not only referring to hardware architectures, but also operating systems such as FreeBSD. I believe currently it doesn't have official support from LR and the compiler tools. Um, I, th I think the main blocking point here would be our ability to uh, automatically test stuff. Uh, in particular for uh, for FreeBSD, I think. Um, now, uh, as far as hardware architecture, I would really like to have some support on stuff like uh, the Raspberry Pi, for instance, and uh, these kind of things. Uh, but again, it's 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 difficult to automatically test. So, uh, in terms of um, quality assurance, uh, uh, it's it's a bit more difficult for us. And and then. The other part is having a way to to have the um, host uh, CPU architecture available in some of the case statements of the manifests and these kind of things. But that's what we discussed with uh, with Leandro. Uh, so, uh, well, for for uh, for a new operating system that can be tested in GitHub. I think it's simpler to add support because, of course, uh, patches are always welcome, even if we are not able to test uh, every following submission. But uh, things that can be tested in our current setup with Docker files and GitHub actions, in principle, that should be easy to add, for example. Okay. Jeffrey R. Carter asks, can I use other with a compiler other than GNAT? Well, right now you could use it for to retrieve the dependencies, not to drive the compilation. But for, there is nothing uh, precluding that you get all the sources that you need and then you, you should have to prepare the compilation for this other compiler. Right, right now, a layer drives uh, GPR build, and GPR build is uh, compatible with uh, virtually any compiler you want. So mm -hmm. the, the, the focus point would be GPR build. Uh, at least that's, that's the status at the moment. OK. Um, RRREEE -E asks, I have no experience with a layer so far. Is it possible to include external build commands like make for generating ADA files or for generating documentation? Yes, so I can answer. Uh, you you have pre and post uh, actions, so uh, little little comments that you can run before or uh, after the builds, for instance. If you look at the uh, SDL ADA crate, there's an example of that. There's a call to make uh, that to generate some ADA file. So we already have the case. OK, uh, Stefan Carres asks, is there a Debian package for Aller? Not to the best of my knowledge. Okay. We don't, so, we don't do the... Yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, we are nearing the end of the Q&A. If you would like to talk to Fabienne and Marcel directly, uh, please uh, join this room. The bot will make it open in a few seconds, and you can have a direct conversation or more questions.